Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri. The topic of today's video is Azure OpenAI Function Calling, a practical example using C Sharp and ASP.NET Razor Pages. Inasmuch as one can obtain valuable information by prompting the various OpenAI language models, it becomes even more valuable when these models can be integrated with custom systems and tools. In this demo, we will integrate an LLM with the Azure AI function calling capability to query local data in the form of a simple products.csv file. Of course, this concept can easily be extended to more complex systems and tools. The sample application is based on ASP.NET Razor Pages. It receives a natural language prompt from the user and goes through this three-step process before responding. So this is how it works. At first, your application makes a chat completions call to Azure OpenAI. Azure OpenAI, knowing that the request can be resolved by calling a local function, it provides information to the application telling it to grab the response from your local function. Thereafter, another chat completion request is made to OpenAI and OpenAI responds with the final response for the user. So this is how it works. We will start by creating a simple Razor application with this command .NET new Razor and the output directory will be called OAI func call. Let's go into this newly created directory. And in here, we want to add two packages. The first package is the CSV helper. And this is going to be used for importing a products.csv file. The second package that we need is the Azure AI.OpenAI package. And at this moment, it is still in beta and it's beta.13. So let's install this one as well. And I'll open our application in VS Code. Of course, to continue with this demo, you will need to have an account with Azure and you will need to set up an Azure OpenAI service, grab the endpoint and grab an API key as well. So we will put those credentials in the app settings.json file. And we can add a new section here with the necessary credentials. Of course, this is not the final because I cannot share with you the resource name and my key. Note that the model we'll be using at this time is the GPT-35 Turbo 16K. And that is the model that will allow us to do functions calling at this time. Next, I will grab some sample data from this GIST GitHub site. To make it easier on you, this link can be found in the description of this YouTube video. So I'll take this and go to that site. It should take me to this page and I'm just gonna grab this sample data from here, copy it. And in the WW root folder, I'm going to create a new file called products.csv and then just paste that sample data in here. By the way, this sample data was taken from the well-known Northwind database that used to come with SQL Server. Next, I will create a models folder here. And in the models folder, I'll add a new class product. And in that class, I will add certain properties that will represent the column names in this CSV file. So this is what that class will look like. I'll be using the CSV reader, which is based on this package that we installed earlier on, the CSV helper, and it will help us read the products.csv file into the application. So here we are, we have these four properties that match the column names in products.csv. And let's resolve these namespaces here. We've got a load products method. 
This load products method, its job is to load this product.csv file and hydrate a list of products. So it returns a list of products. And finally, in the same class, we have a toString method that displays in a one-liner the product ID, product name, units in stock, and unit price. Let's say we want to answer these questions. For example, what is the ID number of product? And we'll give it the name of a product. In this case, Louisiana Hot Spiced Okra. We might also want to ask, what is the unit price of product, say, Sir Rodney's Marmalade? How about how many units in stock for product Tofu? These three questions can be answered by one function. The last function is, what is the most expensive product? So we'll make another function for this kind of question. For the first three questions, I'm going to create a class called product agent, and that will help me answer the first three questions. For the last question, I'm going to create a class called most expensive product agent, and that will help me answer the last question. In the same models folder, I'm going to create a new class here called product agent. And again, in the same folder, I'll create another class called most expensive product agent. In the first class, which is just product agent, I'll add the following code. At first, I will declare two static instance variables. The first one is going to be a descriptive name for the function definition. And a good name is get product details. Then I will declare a list of products. That would come from the product class that I created earlier on. And it had a method called load products that loads the products from a CSV file. Let's resolve the namespaces for the rest of this class. I declare here a static method called get definition and it returns a function definition. This function definition is actually needed by OpenAI and it contains the name of the function, which is essentially what we declared up here, a description of what it does. And the description is get product details by product name. And are there any parameters? So here we declare that yes, there is a parameter of type object and it's got properties, product name of type string, and the description, which is the product name example Pavlova. This product name is required. Let's resolve this namespace here. You have to also declare the JSON serializer options, and it's got a property naming policy here that is based on camel case. Down here is the actual method get product details that does the heavy lifting. So in this case, it's going to filter out from the products list, the product name, which is equal to the argument that's being passed to this method. It grabs the first. If the result is null, it will return a null, which means it couldn't find that product. Otherwise, it's going to return the two string method of product details. Don't forget that in our product class, we did define a two string method down here. Finally, there is another class that's declared also in this file, and it's called product input. The product input is the argument that's going to be passed to the function definition. Let's close this and open the most expensive product agent that we declared earlier on. I'm going to paste this code here. Before I explain what it does, let me just resolve all these namespaces. This class is much easier than the previous one because to get the most expensive product, you don't need to pass an argument. Again, at the top, we're declaring the name that will be used to describe this function. Again, the products will be loaded from the product class load products method. This is the function definition. And the function definition, its name comes from this instance variable. And the description is get details of the most expensive product. Now we have the actual method here that does the heavy lifting, get most expensive product details. For this one, we're taking the products 
ordering them in descending order by price and grabbing the first one. If the first is null, it means we haven't found anything. Otherwise, we return product details to string. At this stage, we have created all the functions that we need to support our application. The next step is let's build a user interface to test this out. Let's go now to the pages folder where we have our index.cshtml and the code behind index.cshtml.cs. Let's start first with index.cshtml and build the interface. So I'm going to remove this and replace it with this code. And the form simply receives a prompt size 80 characters and it's required. Then we have a submit button and the submit button will post to this code behind file. And I have some examples here of what are some prompts that we can use. You don't have to stick to this, but this is just to help you quickly test the application which will use our functions. Of course, we have an error message here because we didn't fully build our index model. Let's go to the code behind class here and I'm going to delete all of this and replace it with my own class definition. First, let's resolve all these namespaces. We're going to dependency inject iLogger and iConfiguration here. On get basically displays our user interface. And when the user clicks on the submit button, it would come to this method. This method receives a prompt and it passes that prompt to a method called call function, which returns a response. Now down here, I have declared a bound property, which is a reply, and it gets its value from the response from this call function. And that goes into reply down here we have this reply, it gets its value from the model. Going back to our code behind, we said that this prompt is passed to the call function method. The call function method, it grabs all the parameters from the app settings file, specifically endpoint API key and the model. We instantiate this open AI client by passing it the API key we also instantiate a chat completions option object, set the deployment name for the chat completions option model to be model itself. Further down, this is where we add our function definitions, the ones that we created before. And we have two of them. We have the product agent and we have the most expensive product agent. We get the function definitions for those. We add them to the collection of chat completion options functions collection. So these two definitions are being added to the functions collection. Then we add a chat request user message to the same chat completions options messages collection. And this is essentially the question that's being passed. You could think of it as the prompt. It's the same thing. This is where we're making our request to chat GPT. We call the get chat completions async method and returns us a response. This is the while loop here. If the response coming from OpenAI wants us to make a function call, then we're going to go into this loop. First thing we do here is add the message to the history of messages in our chat completion options. Then we have this if statement where we check which function call does OpenAI want us to use because it knows what is the likeliest function that will answer the question that has been prompted. If it happens to be the product agent, then we're going to go into this block. If it happens to be the most expensive product agent, then we go into this block. Let's just assume that it is most expensive product agent. In this case, there are no arguments. So I can actually comment this out because we don't need to pass an argument to this function. We're going to call this function with the result that came back from our function. We're going to pass this on, serialize it and put it into the 
chat completions options messages and send it back to OpenAI. Now let's go back to the previous block here. If OpenAI wants us to call this function, then we're going to get the arguments. We're going to serialize the argument and pass it into the function get products details. You remember this input class? We actually defined it in the product agent class down here. This class is being used as the input argument. So here's our input argument, its product name. The response from this function call is going to be returned to this variable, packaged again, and added to the chat completions messages collection and sent back to OpenAI. This is where we're going to make a call to OpenAI, get chat completions async, and we're going to get a response. Now, we can stay in the loop if OpenAI wants us to make another function call. But if it doesn't want us to make any more function calls, we're going to come out of this loop and return the final response from OpenAI. What remains for us to do is just check out our application. So to do that, I'm going to do a .NET watch to open the app in a browser. So I will copy the first question, paste it in here, and ask it, what is the ID number of product Louisiana Hot Spiced Okra? Click on Submit, and it comes back with the answer, the ID number of the product Louisiana Hot Spiced Okra is 64. Let's validate that. Let's go to the product CSV, and we're going to search for Louisiana. L-O-U-I-S, Louisiana Hot Spiced Okra. The ID is 64. So that's correct. Let's go back and do the next question. Copy this and paste it. The next question is, what is the unit price of product Sir Rodney's Marmalade? I'm gonna click on submit and it comes back and it says $62 and a half. Let's validate that. So we're going to search for Rodney. Find here, R-O-D-N, Marmalade. This is it, correct. It is indeed $62.5. Let's go to the next question. How many units in stock of, for product tofu? And the product tofu has 86 units in stock. Let's search for that. Search for tofu. ID 12 and it says there are 86 units. So that's correct too. And finally, what is the most expensive product? Put that here. Now note that what is the most expensive product? We'll use class most expensive product agent. Let's ask that question. And it comes back saying Boston crab meat. Go back to products.csv and search for Boston crab meat. And it seems to be $263. Most likely this is the most expensive product. So we have done our application and looking at the results, I hope you appreciate that there are a lot of opportunities that function calling opens. And this is just scratching the surface of what the possibilities are. I hope you enjoyed this video and until I see you in the next video, take care.